Greetings, we hope all is well. This is the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Genesis 1-1, KJV, states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 2 Corinthians 5-7, KJV, states, For we walk by faith, not by sight. While Romans 10:17 KJV says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Which brings us to Hosea 4:6 KJV, that states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I am your host Minister Larry Montgomery. Senior. The sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www.theauthorscorner.online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. Hello, and we're back. <laughs> Thank God. Um, this week, we want to talk about how to how to start and maintain a relationship with God. I mean, I'm sure everybody's saying, oh, wow, that is something that is a mystery and never thought about. There's actually a process in how to start and maintain a relationship with God. And so it just... I guess, uh, how do you say it, Uh, (laughs) hit my heart one afternoon that that might be something that, you know, should be um, talked about on this show. And so here we are. Now, we've talked about in recent weeks, obedience uh, to God, and that theme is going to come up again in this conversation about having a relationship with them. But we have to keep in mind, which is probably mind boggling, you know, that God is God. I mean, man, really, whatever words we put together cannot encompass who God is and all those things we need to understand who God is. We, as human beings, have to really have faith because unless God is explaining it to you, okay, someone else is interpreting that understanding and explaining it to you. So in order to fully understand the magnitude of what we face here, Man can go on and talk about, you know, oh, we came from the fish, we came from, you know, the the monkeys, we came from, you know, space, whatever. Man don't know. Because any man that got here first is not here to explain how they got here. All right? So those of us who know that there's a reason greater than we can conceive for us being here, we have to accept the fact that there's more to it than we actually know why we are here. So before I go any deeper, let me put up my my video, my clip, and then we'll add some value to it and close out. Graded Gospels by Minister Dr. Larry Montgomery. 
Senior. Giving honor and glory to God who is the head of my life. I humbly announce the publishing of a God-led reminder of his Bible specifically the four Gospels written by Apostle Matthew, Apostle Mark, Apostle Luke, and Apostle John. No this is not a reboot or an update, but it is a study guide for those looking for further understanding of God's time on earth. This is a first-of-its-kind effort to provide both committed Christians and prospective followers, with a concise overview of the four Gospels found in the King James Version of the Bible. This effort was created to aid in the reading of the four Gospels at the same time, for a 360-degree understanding of key events during our Lord Jesus Christ, time with man here on earth as compiled by Minister Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. Dr. Montgomery cautions you that there may also be one or two points of information that could be eye-opening and inspire further research for the curious reader but know that he had no intention of confusing or detracting from what God had intended his believers to know, about the event's breath in his word and written in his Bible. In this resource you will find an integrated comparative discussion of eight specific events or chapters in Jesus' journey on earth as presented in the King James Version of the Bible. The list of events include The story of the birth of Jesus The story of John the Baptist The parables Jesus spoke The miracles he performed His experience with the Apostle Judas His accusers His crucifixion, and His resurrection This book provides a combined timeline of eight events as presented in the four Gospels we also provide some additional insights about Jesus' walk with man. We conclude the presentation with a combined recount of the eight key events during his walk on earth, in hopes of providing the reader with a 360-degree view of the events as told by the apostles. Finally, the Bible tells us that the Lord said, My people perish for lack of understanding. Hosea 4 6 KJV Dr. Montgomery hopes that this resource does provide each reader with some additional understanding. Available on Amazon and at the Author's Corner online. God bless. Start and maintain a relationship with God. What does it mean to have a personal relationship with God? Having a personal relationship with God. One begins the moment we realize our need for Him. To admit we are sinners, and... 3-inch faith received Jesus Christ as Savior. Those who have a personal relationship with God include God in their daily lives. They pray to Him, read His Word, and meditate on verses in an effort to get to know Him even better. This personal relationship with God is not as hard to find as we might think, and there is no mysterious formula for getting it. As soon as we become children of God, we receive the Holy Spirit, who will begin to work on our hearts. We should pray without ceasing read the Bible, and join a Bible-believing church. All these things will help us to grow spiritually. Trusting in God to get us through each day and believing that He is our sustainer is the way to have a relationship with Him. How can I have a closer relationship with God? Developing a closer relationship with God is an admirable goal and reflects a heart that is truly reborn, for only those who are in Christ desire a closer relationship with God. No matter where we are in our walk with Christ, we can always have a closer walk, and, even glorified in heaven, we will have all eternity to grow in our relationship with the Lord. There are five basic things we can do to have a closer relationship with God. The first thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to 1. Make a daily habit of confessing our sin to Him. If sin is the barrier in our relationship with God, then confession removes that barrier. When we confess our sins before God, He promises to forgive us 1 John 1 9, and forgiveness is what restores a relationship that has been strained. The second thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to listen when God speaks. Many today are chasing a supernatural experience of hearing God's voice, but the Apostle Peter tells us that we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, 2 Peter 1 19. That more sure prophetic word is the Bible. The third thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to speak to Him through prayer. If reading the Bible is listening to God speak to us, speaking to God is accomplished through prayer. The fourth thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to find a body of believers with whom we can regularly worship. 
Finally, a closer relationship with God is built upon a life of obedience. Jesus told his disciples in the upper room, If you love me, keep my commandments, John 14 23. In summary, we develop a closer relationship with 1. Through confession 2. Bible study 3. Prayer 4. Regular church attendance and 5. Obedience But consider this, how do we develop a closer relationship with other human beings? We spend time with them in conversation, opening our hearts to them and listening to them at the same time. We acknowledge when we've done wrong and seek forgiveness. We seek to treat them well and sacrifice our own needs to fulfill theirs. It's not really that different with our relationship to our Heavenly Father. Okay. So now to have an overview, let's, you know, let's see if we can uh, put some meat behind that overview. How to start and maintain a relationship with God. What does it mean to have a personal relationship with God? As said in the video, having a personal relationship with God begins the moment we realize our need for him. We should not be the kind of person who, until we need something, that we act on it. We should be the kind of people that who seek to understand things that are around them, understand things that they do and why they do them. So number one begins the moment we re realize our need for him, God that is. Number two, admit we are sinners. I mean, we sin, it's like on the regular, a lot of people believe that they're not sinners because they haven't done anything wrong, haven't done anything wrong. But sin is the kind of thing that even thinking about it, sinning is a sin. Number three, in faith, receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. Because if we don't have faith, we're not going to trust what God's word is. And then God's word Jesus Christ is our Savior. And we will talk about that whole relationship in a minute or two. Well, I'll mention I'm not going to talk about it. God our, heaven, God, our Heavenly Father, has always desired to be close to us, to have a relationship with us. Before Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, and that's in Genesis chapter 3, both he and Eve knew God on an intimate and personal level. They walked with him in the garden and talked directly to him. Due to the sin of man, we became separated and disconnected from God. Now, the sin of man was Adam. Adam sinned. And it's interesting because as I think about it, you're walking with God every day. You're talking to him directly and you still didn't know who you were talking to. Let me go on. What many people do not know, realize, or care about is that Jesus gave us the most amazing gift, the opportunity to spend eternity with God if we trust in him. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We find that in Romans 6 and 23. God became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ to take on our sin, be killed, and then be risen to life again, proving his victory over sin and death. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8 and 1. If we accept this gift, we have become acceptable to God and can have a relationship with him. Those who have a personal relationship with God include God in their daily lives. They pray to him. They read his word and meditate on verses in an effort to get to know him even better. 
Those who have a personal relationship with God pray for wisdom. We find that in James 1 and 5, which is the most valuable asset we can ever have. They take their request to him, asking in Jesus' name. That's John 15 and 16. Jesus is the one who loves us enough to give his life for us. And he is the one who bridged the gap between us and God. That gap was created by Adam and Eve. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as our counselor. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. We're talking about the Holy Spirit here. But you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. That's John 14, 15 to 17. Jesus said this before he died. And after he died, the Holy Spirit became available to all who earnestly seek to receive him. He is the one who lives in the hearts of believers and never leaves. He counsels us, teaches us truths and changes our hearts. Without this divine Holy Spirit, we would not have the ability to fight against evil and temptations. But since we do have him, we begin to produce the fruit that comes from allowing the Spirit to control us. That fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You find that in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. This personal relationship with God is not as hard to find as we might think, and there is no no mysterious formula for getting it. As soon as we become children of God, we receive the Holy Spirit who will begin to work on our hearts. We should pray without ceasing, read the Bible, and join a Bible-believing church. All these things will help us to grow spiritually. Now, trusting in God to get us through each day and believing that he is our sustainer is the way to have a relationship with God for he will not leave you or forsake you. Although we may not see changes immediately, we will begin to see them over time, and all the truths will become clear. Now, I said all of that to give you an overview of how to begin a relationship with God. Now let's talk about a closer relationship with God. So we have one. Some of us have a relationship with him and you know, we're not exercising it or not working with it. And some of us don't know how to move closer to God. Because listen, going to church is a good thing and there's a reason for going to church. But for you who like or prefer to attend bedside Baptist, you're missing a lot. And in order to get a closer relationship with them, you need to follow the things that will help you get a closer relationship with them. Developing a closer relationship with God is an admirable goal and reflects a heart that is truly reborn. For only those who are in Christ desire a closer relationship with God. We must also understand that in this life, we will never be as close to God as we ought to be or desire to be. The reason for this is lingering sin in our lives. This is not a deficiency on God's part, but on ours. 
our sin remains a barrier to the full and complete fellowship with God, which will be realized once we're in glory. Even the Apostle Paul, who had about as close a relationship as one could probably have with God in this life, still longed for a closer relationship. I quote, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the suppressing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. That's in Philippians 3, 8 to 9. No matter where we are in our walk with Christ, we can always have a closer walk and even glorified in heaven. We will have all eternity to grow in our relationship with the Lord. There are five basic things we can do to have a closer relationship with God. The first thing, make a daily habit of confessing our sin to him. One, make a daily habit of confessing our sin to him. If sin is the barrier in our relationship with God, then confession removes that barrier. When we confess our sins before God, he promises to forgive us. We find that in 1 John 1 and 9. And forgiveness is what restores a relationship that has been strained. We must keep in mind that confession is more than simply saying, I'm sorry for my sin, God. It is the heartfelt contrition of those who recognize that their sin is an offense to a holy God. It is the confession of one who realizes that his sin is what nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. It is the cry of the publican in Luke 18 who said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. As King David wrote, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Psalm 51 and 17. The second thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to listen when God speaks. Listen when God speaks. Many today are chasing a supernatural experience of hearing God's voice, but the Apostle Peter tells us that we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention as to the lamp, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star is risen in your hearts. 2 Peter 1, 19. That more sure prophetic word is the Bible. In the Bible, we hear God's voice to us. It is through the god breathed scriptures that we become thoroughly equipped for every good deed 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. So if we want to grow closer to God, we should read his word regularly, regularly. In reading his word, we are listening to God speak through it by his spirit, whom illuminates the word to us. I'm sure you, you've heard and you'll probably experience if you do read the Bible, that you read the same thing, you read one verse today and read that same verse tomorrow, you get a different understanding of it. 
you read one verse today and read that same verse a year from now, you get an even deeper understanding of that word because things have happened. The spirit has moved in you. You have moved. You have grown. The third thing we can do to have a close relationship with God is to speak through prayer. Speak to him through prayer. If reading the Bible is listening to God speak to us, speaking to God is accomplished through prayer. The Gospels often record Jesus seeking, secreting himself away to commune with his Father in prayer. Prayer is much more than simply a way to ask God for things we need or want. Consider the model prayer. Keep this in mind here. That Jesus gives his disciples in Matthew 6, 9 to 13. The first three petitions in that prayer are directed toward God. May his name be hallowed. May his holy, may his kingdom come. May his will be done. The last three petitions of the our requests are make of, oh, no, I'm sorry. The last three petitions are request. We make of God after we've taken care of the first three. Give us our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. Lead us not into temptation. Another thing we can do to revive our prayer lives is to read the Psalms. Many of the Psalms are heartfelt cries to God for various things. In the Psalms, we see adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and supplication modeled in a divinely inspired way. Now, the fourth thing we can do to have a closer relationship with God is to find a body of believers with whom we can regularly, regularly worship. This is such a vital component of spiritual growth. Too often we approach church with a what can I get out of it mentality. We seldom take the time to prepare our hearts and minds to worship. Again, the Psalms show us many calls from God to his people to come and worship the Lord. For example, Psalm 95, 1 to 2, God invites us, commands us to come into his presence for worship. How can we, his people, fail to respond? Not only does regular church attendance give us an opportunity to come before the Lord's presence in worship, but it also gives us an opportunity to fellowship with the Lord's people. As we come into the house of the Lord in worship and fellowship with his people, we can't help but grow closer to the Lord as a result. Finally, a closer relationship with God is built upon a life of obedience. We've discussed that for almost a month. Jesus told his disciples in the upper room, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 and 23. James told us, James tells us, that as we submit ourselves to God through obedience, resist the devil and draw near to God, he will draw near to us. James 4, 7 and 8. Paul tells us in Romans that our obedience is our living sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. Romans 12 and 1. We must keep in mind that all biblical exhortations to obedience are presented as our response to the grace of God we receive in salvation. We don't earn salvation through our obedience. Rather, it is the way we show our love and gratitude toward God. So, one, to get a closer relationship with God, we confess our sins. 
regularly. <laughs> we study the Bible. We pray. And we regularly attend church. And finally, we hold ourselves obedient to his word and the commands that he has given us to show that we are his. We can develop a closer relationship with God. It, it seems rather simple, if not simplistic. But consider this. How do we develop a closer relationship with other human beings? We spend time with them in conversation, opening our hearts to them and listening to them at the same time. We acknowledge when we've done wrong and seek forgiveness from them. We seek to treat them well and sacrifice our own needs to fulfill theirs. It's not really that different when our relationship, when we want a relationship or a closer relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, yeah, we, we've hit a few notes here. And before I close, I want to offer another one of my publications uh, for your consideration. Announcing the release of the Christian Bible Study Guide entitled, The Holy Spirit, Giver of Spiritual Gifts and Spiritual Fruit. By Minister Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. This Bible guide was compiled to provide mature Christians current insight of one aspect of the Holy Spirit's work when it comes to the Great Commission. Its goal was to show how easy it is for those with a more narrow understanding of God's intent can limit the love God has poured out to encourage His children and invite all others to partake of that same love. Once a full understanding of the fruits and gifts of the Holy Spirit is received everyone will benefit from the knowledge of God. Topics presented include About the Holy Spirit What or who is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? How do we get the Holy Spirit? Prayer and the Holy Spirit The Fruits of the Holy Spirit Definition of Gifts versus Fruits What are the Nine Fruits of the Holy Spirit? The Fruit of the Spirit is Love, Joy, Peace, Patience, Kindness, Goodness, Faithfulness, Gentleness and Self-Control. The Gifts of the Holy Spirit There are Nine Gifts of the Holy Spirit The Word of Wisdom the word of knowledge, gift of faith, gifts of healings, the working of miracles, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discerning of spirits, the gift of discerning different kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Why some say the Holy Spirit is ceased? Why we know the Holy Spirit is still alive and needed. Available on Amazon and at the Authors Corner. Online. Also available on the Walking in Faith podcast. Now I want to thank you again, and hope that um, I was able to share something of interest to you. Uh, something that may have um, enlightened you or confirmed some things that you've already known or felt in your heart. Until next week, God willing, I'll see you then. Thanks be to God. You have been listening to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery senior and friends. Join us again next time as we continue to labor in this vineyard with an eye toward bringing the words of God to those who are interested. Remember, the sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group.tv and can be found on most podcast platforms. 
video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www. The Author's Corner. Online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. May God continue to bless you and yours until next time. God bless.